Hey math students, let's talk about polar coordinates, shall we? Um, now, you've learned about polar coordinates. You've learned that uh, on a plane, if we have this point right here, there's two different ways of describing this point. You can either use Cartesian coordinates, also known as rectangular coordinates. They're sometimes called Cartesian because they're named after René Descartes, the 17th century mathematician and philosopher, uh, from the glory days of French mathematics. But anyway, you can use rectangular or Cartesian coordinates, or you can use polar coordinates. Now the difference is, and of course you know this already, but we'll just go through it anyway. The difference is with Cartesian coordinates, you say, how far over do I go? That's X. And then how far up do I go? That's Y to get to your point and then you label it x, y, okay? We're all familiar with that. We've been doing that for years. With polar coordinates, as we, least, as we recently learned, what you do is you also have two numbers, r and theta, and you figure out which direction you're pointing from the origin to your point, that's theta, and then r is the distance that you go, okay? So this is theta, and this is r here. And so you get the point r theta. Strangely enough, uh, with Cartesian coordinates, with rectangular coordinates, x is generally your independent variable and y is your dependent variable. And with polar coordinates, the second one, theta is your independent variable and r is generally your dependent variable. So. Uh, a little confusing there, but I'm sure you can handle it. So uh, now what I, want to, what I want to look at today is how to go back and forth from, uh, well, actually in particular, I want to look at if you know the polar coordinates, how can you find the, uh, the rectangular coordinates? So back when you were first studying trigonometry, you did some problems kind of like this. Uh, we'll say, uh, you have an angle, and uh, I'll put it in green. You have an angle that's in standard position, so that means the, uh, the initial side is just headed out the positive x-axis. And then you have uh, the terminal side here, and it goes through, I don't know, let's say uh, the point 5, 7. And then this is theta here. And what we asked you back then was, Tell me what the sine of theta is, what the cosine of theta is, and what the tangent of theta is. Okay? So let's remember what we did back then. And what we did is we said, well, I'm just going to drop down a little vertical side right there. And uh, because it's going through the point 5, 7, this must be 7. This side right here must be 5. And using the Pythagorean theorem, this would be the square root of 5 squared is 25, 7 squared is 49, 25 plus 49 is 74, I believe. So this is the square root of 74. And now I've got my opposite, my adjacent, and my hypotenuse. So I can say the sine of theta is 7 over the square root of 74. The cosine of theta is 5 over the square root of 74. And the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. That's 7 over 5. Okay? Easy enough. So let's look at that. And let's say, okay, instead of calling this uh, 5, 7, we're going to call it x and y. And instead of calling this... Uh, square root of 74, so this will be y, this will be x. This is going to be r, where x squared plus y squared is r squared, okay? And so that means the sine of theta, instead of being 7 over the square root of 74, we're going to say it's equal to uh, y over r. The cosine of theta is going to be equal to x over r and the tangent of theta is going to be equal to y over x. Now, this problem that we did long ago, 
r and theta are the exact same r and theta that we're using for polar coordinates. Okay, it's really, really similar. So if the sine of theta is y over r, if I multiply both sides by r, I would get that y is r times the sine of theta. And if the cosine of theta is x over r, that means I can multiply both sides by r and get x is r times the cosine of theta. And uh, the tangent, well, we'll use that later. But for right now, I want to focus on those two, okay? So what that means is, let's say we have, uh, let's say we have a point, and what point will we have? We will have the point um, 5 and 53.13 degrees. 53.13 degrees. Okay? So 53.13 degrees, that's a little more than 45 degrees, so it's going to be kind of going up like that. So that's about, let's say it's right there, okay? So this is five units away from the origin. And I want to know, what are my Cartesian coordinates? That is, what are my rectangular coordinates? How far over am I going? How far up am I going from the origin to get to that point right there? It's really easy. X is going to be 5 times the cosine of... 53.13 degrees, and y is going to be 5 times the sine of 53.13 degrees. Grab your handy dandy calculator, pop in those two, uh, make sure you're in degree mode, okay, don't get in radian mode, and uh, do those two uh, equations there, and what you will find is that 5 times the cosine of 53.13 is about 3, and 5 times the sine of 53.13 is about 4. And those are my rectangular coordinates. Man, that was easy. Let's do another one. Let's do the point 11.1, uh, 11 .1 and negative 34 pi over 113. Okay? Uh, this is obviously in radians. Grab that calculator again, put it in radian mode while you're thinking about it right now. And then let's figure out what our X and Y are gonna be. So first off, I need to kind of, you don't have to plot the point if you don't want to. You can just go straight from here to, matter of fact, let's go ahead and do that. We're just gonna say this is 11.1 .1 times the cosine of negative 34 pi over 113 and 11.1 .1 times the sine of negative 34 pi over 113. And once we pop that in our calculators, we'll see that this is approximately, what is this? This is about 6.5 and negative 9. So if I were to plot that, I would go 6.5, negative 9, down here, okay? And let's see, does that make sense? Yeah, 34 over 113 is uh, it's a rather small fraction. It's about a third or so. So, uh, um, so this is negative. It's close to negative pi over 3. And so that's going to be, yeah, it's going to be headed down here in the fourth quadrant. So that makes sense. Okay? It's that easy. That's all you got to do. This is going to work whether r is positive, whether r is negative, whether theta is positive, whether theta is negative, whether theta is in radians or in degrees, whether it's greater than 2 pi or less than 2 pi or greater than 360 or less than 360. This always works. So it's a really, really easy transition to go from polar to rectangular. In the next video, we'll go from rectangular to polar. All right, till then.